Hello and welcome to The Print. I'm Akanksha Mishra and this is Scientifics where I'll be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. There's a first of its kind research study that uses quite an unusual metric to test environmental pollution in different regions of a place. What is that metric? Honey. Bees, as we all know, encounter a number of environment factors like the water, the air and the soil of a region when they are collecting honey. Now, US scientists have tested 260 samples of local honey across 48 US states to find traces of pollutants like arsenic, lead, cadmium and nickel. This study will appear in Environmental Pollution Journal's January edition. US scientists found that while none of the honey samples had pollutant levels above the safety limit, they did differ in terms of the regions from where the samples were taken from. For example, in northwestern regions, they found honey with high arsenic content, which the scientists speculate could be because of historically high pesticide use in that area, while high lead concentrations in North and South Carolina could be because they are mining regions. This study could elevate the use of honey as a metric for understanding local environment pollution and also its sources. In an interesting new study that uses isotope analysis, Canadian researchers have been able to determine the diet of early American people known as the Clovis people. A paper in Science Advances Journal on 4 December finds that mammoths, the elephant-like mammals that went extinct about 4,000 years ago, were a big part of the diet of early Americans that lived more than 10,000 years ago in the North American region. How did they find this? Well, isotope analysis is a type of study where scientists look at the presence and composition of stable isotopes of carbon and nitrogen in the remains of ancient humans. And then they compare it with the available food sources nearby. The similarities allow them to infer what the human's diet could have composed of at that time. In the case of the Clovis people, they analyzed isotopes found on a young Clovis child called Anzic 1, which was also the first Clovis child to be fully genome sequenced and whose data is readily available. Guess what they found? Not just mammoths, but even bison and camel were a part of the Paleo-Indian's diet, along with other protein sources like elk. What this shows is that the Clovis people were regularly used to hunting large prey like mammoths, which are also known as megafauna. The next story that we are talking about is the use of stem cell therapy to cure blindness. Yes, you heard that right. Scientists in the University of Montreal have used stem cells to create retinal sheaths that were then transplanted into mini pigs that have retinal blindness. What these sheets did was to help regenerate the retinal tissues, including cone receptors that help us in seeing shapes and colours. They use mini pigs for this experiment because the shape of their eyes is very similar to that of humans. And they actually found that stem cell therapy helped in restoring the vision of these pigs that were suffering from retinal degenerative disease. While the technology isn't human ready yet, it is a step towards using stem cell therapy for retinal diseases. For our final story, an intercontinental collaboration to solve an intergalactic mystery. There are currently huge elliptical or spheroid galaxies that have billions, even trillions of stars within them. They are not flat disk shaped like our Milky Way and they have a central dense region that hosts a number of stars. So their formation has been a mystery to astronomers everywhere. Now, in a new nature study published on 4 December, a group of global scientists argue that these elliptical galaxies come into existence because of two flat disk galaxies merging together, releasing a ton of gas which then leads to star formation at a massive level. The scientists used the world's largest radio telescope, ALMA, to study the light signals coming from these early universe galaxies that are famous for their rapid star formation. For context, the rate at which these galaxies form stars is at least 10 to 100 times faster than the Milky Way. Scientists now finally have an explanation for the shape and origin of these spheroid galaxies, which could help further research also. That's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning into The Print.